Hey learners, it's Miss Christina here. Are you ready to go on another adventure? Well, we've got something very special today. We are actually going to go back in time to see some dinosaurs. And we're going to explore three different timelines today. Whoa, what does that mean? Well, dinosaurs weren't around just at one time. We have the Triassic period, which was from 250 to 200 million years ago. And then the Jurassic period, which is 200 to 145 million years ago. And then the Cretaceous period or the most recent period, which is from 145 to 65 million years ago. You might be thinking, whoa, if that is from such a long, long time ago, how did we even find out about these dinosaurs? Well, we are going to talk about paleontologists today and how they discovered these fossils. Hold on a second. What are fossils? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Here are fossils. And paleontologists are scientists who study the history of the earth using fossil evidence. And fossils like this are formed when a plant or animal dies in a watery environment and is buried in mud and silt, and they leave something like this behind for the paleontologist to discover. But we don't want to look at these all day. We want the real thing. So let's travel back in time and see what we can find. All right, we've got some beautiful landscape here. And let's see what dinosaurs we can discover. Whoa, do you see any that you recognize? Do you know the name of this one with that long, long neck? If you said Brachiosaurus, you are correct. This one is known for living in the late Jurassic period. And oof, that one needs to eat a lot. They eat between 440 and 880 pounds of food a day. Ooh, I have a bellyache just thinking about all of that food. And they weighed about 40 tons. And that name, Brachiosaurus, means arm lizard or arm reptile. Ooh, I see another familiar dinosaur over here with our Brachiosaurus. Let me get out of the way so that you can see him. It's a triceratops. Now, tri, that prefix means three. If you've heard of a tricycle that has three wheels, well, what does this triceratops have the, the three of? One, two, three. Yes, it has three horns. That's how it got its name, triceratops. Now, this background is a little bit silly because the Brachiosaurus lived in the Jurassic period and the Stegosaurus actually lived in the Cretaceous period. So we would never actually see these two dinosaurs at the same time in the same place, but it's okay. We're having a lot of fun and make-believe time today. So let's talk about that Triceratops. They are also herbivores like these Brachiosauruses because they love to eat plants. And what do we think it used its horns for? If you said to fight off predators and for self-defense, you are correct. That's exactly what the Triceratops uses its horns for. It lived in North America and could run up to 20 miles per hour. It's actually even the state dinosaur of Wyoming. I bet that's where its fossils were first discovered. Oh, these are some big ones. I think these are the Iguanodons. Okay, keep up with me. Let's go. We don't want them to catch us. Let's talk about some iguanodon facts while we run. Ready? So these are known for their thumbs. That's right, their thumbs. They have five fingers on each hand, but their thumbs are pointy spikes. They're said to have been used as weapons, but we weren't there, so no one knows for sure. But I would say that's a pretty good guess. All right, I also see some things flying up there. We'll talk about those next. So more about the iguanodons. Their back legs, if you see, are much longer than their front legs, and that helps them to stand up upright like this. That's why it looks like they're running on their back legs. And they lived in the area of what is now known as Europe. Okay, let's see, I see some flying items. Maybe those are pterodactyls? I think so. Now, pterodactyls are from the late Jurassic period. 
their lifespan is about 10 to 25 years, but they're very light. They're only about two to 10 pounds. And in length, they're about three to five feet. And technically the pterodactyls are not dinosaurs, they're pterosaurs. Hmm. They're considered a flying reptile. Interesting. All right, let's get out of here before they see us. Oh my goodness, something else dangerous. Okay, that's very quiet. Do you know who this big, big, big dinosaur is? Yes, it's a T-Rex. Oh my goodness. Let's see some facts about the T-Rex. Woo, he's got a lot to say today. <gasps> well, this is a theropod from the Cretaceous period a carnivore that can live up to 28 years. They're up to 48 feet long and they can weigh 16 tons. The first partial skeleton was found in Wyoming. Wow, they were right here in North America. They roam North America, including the US and Canada. They have 50 to 60 large teeth and Funnily enough, they didn't always have to kill their prey. Since they're so big and scary, they could see another dinosaur or animal kill something that looked delicious to them and just walk up and say, hey, that looks pretty delicious. Give me that. And since they're such scary predators, often another animal would just give the dinosaur what he wanted because they didn't want to fight with that big dinosaur. I wouldn't either. All right. Interesting. Oh, we don't want to get there yet. Hang on. All right, what other interesting dinosaurs can we talk about? Oh, this one is one of my favorites, the Ankylosaurus. Why do you think he has this hard shell with all of those spikes? If you said for self-defense, you are correct. This is a dinosaur that has a very soft belly, and he does not want any predators to get to it. But unfortunately, what some predators do is flip him on his back, and that's how they can get to him. But luckily, he is pretty strong, and he can use his spikes on his back to defend himself. Scientists also think that he has this long snout, which gives him a very strong, good sense of smell. What else do we see that is different or special about the Ankylosaurus? Yes, he's got a special tail and it's shaped like a club. So this is another way that he can use self-defense or he uses it for self-defense. So between his shell and his tail, he's a good defender against predators. Okay, we've got our Ankylosaurus. Oh, another one that I don't see. Our Spinosaurus. This is an extremely special dinosaur. This is one of the only dinosaurs that can swim. If you look at its feet, you can see its toes are webbed. So it can use its toes like flippers through the water. And it's got that seven foot long fin on the top, which also helps it to be excellent in the water. And it's named for that seven foot long spine. It inhabits or inhabited back then the North African Sahara region. Its crocodile-like teeth were ideal for catching fish. Wow, so that's our one dinosaur that is a really good swimmer and likes to eat fish. Okay, okay let's keep looking for some more dinosaurs. Oh, I'm looking for one that has a very spiky back. Do you know which dinosaur that is? If you said Stegosaurus, you are correct. Let's see if we can find him. Okay, so Mr. Stegosaurus, where are Oh, there he is. He popped up. All right, let's find some facts about the Stegosaurus. He is from the late Jurassic period, so from 150 to 155 million years ago. And he has a long lifespan. He can live 75 to 100 years. He was originally discovered, his fossils, in Colorado, USA. And his name means roof lizard. The brain is actually the size of a walnut. So Mr. Stegosaurus has an itty bitty teeny weeny brain. And he was estimated to have 17 to 22 of those protective plates along his spine. 
And since his fossils were originally discovered in Colorado, he is the state dinosaur of Colorado. Pretty special. All right. Let's see. Oop, there's Ankylosaurus again. Get out of here, friend. We already talked about you. All right. Now what we want to talk to about. Why are these dinosaurs no longer with us? Well, I wasn't here. You weren't here. So all we can base our assumptions on are theories. There are a couple of really popular theories, which we will talk about today. The first one is the asteroid or a comet. This was known as the mass extinction event. The dinosaurs, we have all of these fossils to prove that they existed, but they're not here anymore. What happened? A very strong theory is that one day an asteroid or a comet struck planet Earth, which wiped out 75% of all plant and animal species. Incredible. Another theory is that there was a volcanic eruption that did the same thing. 75% of all plant animals, including the dinosaurs, no more. Other theories include climate change, disease, or sea level change. But again, no one knows for certain what happens. It's none of us were there. But again, it's important to note that this had to happen for us to evolve as a human species. All right, shall we hop back into the classroom to review some of the dinosaurs we met today? All right. Who was your favorite dinosaur that we saw today? I think you know mine. I talked all about our Spinosaurus. I think it's so interesting that we have a dinosaur that can swim. It's got those sharp teeth for catching fish. It has webbed feet to help it swim, and it's got that seven foot long spine in the back. Very fancy. All right. And we can't forget, oh, the mighty T-Rex. What an incredible fierce creature. What are some facts you remember about the T-Rex? All right. I found it really interesting how the dinosaur doesn't always have to hunt for its prey since it's so big and fierce, it can just get other animals to Pass along its food. Say, hey, mister, give me what you just hunted, and it'll just give it to the T-Rex. Incredible. All right. And then we have what is named the arm lizard, the Brachiosaurus, an herbivore that likes to eat plants. Pretty neat. All right. And then we also met our Ankylosaurus. Why did he have to have this shell? covered with spikes. Do we remember what part of his body was very soft and delicate? You are correct. His belly was very soft and delicate. So he had to have that shell so that he could protect himself and hope that predators wouldn't roll him onto his belly or onto his back to have access to his belly. And he's also got that nice long snout that scientists think helped him to have a very good sense of smell. Okay, let's see if we missed any. Ooh, we've got that pterodactyl. This was technically not a dinosaur, but a flying reptile. Pretty interesting. All right, friends, I hope you had a great time on your adventure today, going back in time to the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods to visit all those different dinosaurs. And I want you to think about think happened to those dinosaurs? Was it an asteroid, a comet, a volcanic eruption? Oh, so much to think about. All right. I'll see you on our next adventure. Bye-bye.